Yeah, for me, I think the headliner was the depth, not only on the pitching st- on the pitching rotation, pitching staff, but offensively. Obviously, Paul Skeens comes in Friday, goes six innings, 12 strikeouts. Riley Cooper goes in Saturday, throws five and a third, no hit. He gets pulled. Um, they finished the game off. I think they won Saturday five to three. And then on Sunday, um, Chase Shores comes out there, puts, the good, puts together a good performance, first outing in college, his college career, goes out there three and a third on kind of a tight pitch count. He goes out there, and then Ty Floyd finishes the game with three innings. I think that was on Sunday, I believe. Um, no, that was, that was on Saturday. That was on Saturday. Ty Floyd throws three innings, no runs, no hits. And so you just saw that you see the talent from top to bottom on the pitching staff. That's with uh, Grant Taylor going down. And then, um, you know, Tommy White slides back to first base, dislocates his shoulder in the first inning of the first game, and they don't miss a beat offensively. Opening series of the year. Offense is kind of a hit or miss. You just kind of want them to be consistent and have good at bats, and that's what they did. So I think all in all, everything that you heard, all the hype that you heard going into the season, they lived up to it the first weekend. They did everything that you kind of wanted to see from this team. Yeah, there's a lot. Like you said, obviously there's a lot more freshmen that that opened the season in the starting lineup than I thought. You know, you had um, Brady Neal behind the plate, and I think he was supposed to be, you know, defensively, but his swing looked great. You have Jared Jones who came in there was a DH all day. I mean, all weekend he played well. But I think the guy who, you know, it's, it's a familiar name, but I think the guy who everybody should be excited about is Gavin Dugas because, you know, two years ago he led the SEC in RBIs. He was one of the you know most feared hitters in the SEC last year. He didn't have a bad year, 305 I think for the year with five homers. Didn't live up to his expectations. He had some eye issues going on. They got that corrected. He gets in after Tommy White goes down and goes six for eight for the weekend with two homers. So, you know, it's a guy like that to get started off as hot as he is. I think that's going to bode well for the long, in the long run of the season because he's going to, you know, get off hot, start the season with a lot of confidence, kind of get the eye issues behind him, and then really anchor this lineup. And I think, you know, with Dylan Cruz and Trey Morgan and Tommy White when he comes back, hopefully this coming weekend, and now you have Gavin Dugat back to what he has and all the other guys. I mean, this lineup just keeps getting dangerous, more dangerous and dangerous. So I went through the minor league baseball, right? Like I was, when I was coming up through minor leagues, that's when they started the pitch clock in professional baseball. And since then they've kind of gone down on time, right? And so I understand the concept of the pitch clock, right? I understand that you want to shorten the games. You want to make the games a little bit more entertaining and a little bit quicker paced for the fans and for TV and all these types of things. I understand all that. But when these rules and these pitch clocks start determining games, right? I think that's when you got to figure out, okay, the umpire, whoever's making these decisions, have to ha- they have to have this feel, a sense of like, okay, I'm going to be a little bit more lenient on this situation, and they got to be stricter maybe early in the game, be a little bit stricter later on in the game, understand that the you know, pressure builds. You, gotta give the, you, gotta, you have to give these guys some time and opportunity to like calm down. So you saw some incidents over the, over the weekend. It's the first weekend that they've, you know, they've had it, and you've had you know, strikeouts based off of the time, pitch clock, and balls called because of the pitch clock. And so... I think it's going to be a work in progress. I'm not a huge fan of it, but that's the way baseball is going, not just in college baseball, but in professional baseball. So the guys are going to have to figure out a way, you know, if they have a routine at the, in the box when they get in and get out, they have to figure out a way to quicken that or, you know, way, find out a way of not having the clock uh, affecting their, their preparation.